This is a really basic tutorial to show you how to use Adobe Illustrator to produce a flat sketch. You'll be producing both a front view as well as a back view. Um, the front view must include the busk loops as you can see here and the back view must include eyelets. Please watch this clip but also follow the instructions that are saved within the Google Classroom page and they're also in your corset making booklet. Start by manually sketching your corset. Just photograph it with your phone, email it to yourself. Open up Adobe Illustrator and open up a print or a letter option and then find and place your corset and scale it so that it fits appropriately and you might need to rotate, wait for the double arrowhead to come up so that it's on your page properly. Press shift when you're rotating or scaling so that it stays in proportion. Click on view, um, show grid. So you've got these grid rulers which will assist with scale. Go to your layer panel and basically you're going to lock by clicking right here and the little padlock comes up. You're going to lock layer one. So your sketch, your rough sketch is basically going to act as a template that you're going to trace on top of digitally and that layer needs to be locked. You don't want it to move around. So that's layer one. So that one. I can e easily understand which layer is which later. I've named my layer one. I've just clicked on it and renamed it sketch. And now I'm going to go down below and I'm going to open up a new layer, create new layer. The two tools you're going to focus on using are the pen tool and underneath the pen tool, the curvature pen tool. So best to have a bit of a play with these before you begin. It's also going to be easiest if you change these two pen colors to red and you can change them back to black or a plainer color You'll later. have access to a pen tool practice document, which I highly recommend you have a play with before you start producing your corset flat sketch. So just have a play now with the curvature tool and the pen tool and just double click on this tool here and select a color that's nice and bright. You can change the color later, the color of the um, pen or the line you're going to be drawing with. And then um, select the pen tool and you'll see in this case, this is actually filling up. So what I want to do is click on this little none box here and now it'll just draw a line without a fill inside it. To make your pen line a bit um, thicker, what you can do is click on window, then find stroke. And then see the weight here. Just change it, you can go to all of these different settings. This is a bit extreme here, but you can see this is a really thick weight. With the curvature pen tool, you can select a point, then select another point, click down, and then you can pick up the center of the line wherever you'd like to sort of curve it. And it just produces a nice natural kind of curve shape, like so. To duplicate a line such as here and down here, which has already been done, which represents binding on this corset. It's much better to draw the first line then copy and paste a second one rather than try and redraw it twice where it doesn't look perfectly the same. So if you just literally go Control C for copy, um, then Control V for paste, and then literally move it into place. There you go. Experiment with using either the curvature pen tool or the pen tool for this. Um, for this side seam I use the regular pen tool and I'll do it again here. So I'm just going to click once and then for the second click I'm going to hold and drag which just gives it that ability to curve and then I'm going to finish off on that bias binding piece. To end so it doesn't keep hanging on just press P. And I'll go again. And finally, I'm just going to do the center front. Get your finger ready to press the shift button because you want to draw a completely straight line here. So shift ensures it's completely straight. So it doesn't matter that my 
original rough sketch um, doesn't meet up. It's the, the rough sketch was just there as a guide. If you press Control plus, you can zoom in and then contrast, Control minus to zoom out just to check that all of your junctions meet up. I want to see how your Illustrator sketch is looking without the um, sketch behind it. Just click on the little eye on layer one and it will disappear. So I have used the direct selection tool to click on this seam, which I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste it as a stitch line. So here you can see I've copied this line here and I've pasted it so it's highlighted here. So now I'm going to go into my stroke box whilst it's highlighted and use the correct settings to change it to a dashed or a stitch. So here line. are the settings within stroke, which you'll find under the windows pull down menu. Um, that we're going to need to use to produce top stitching. So the weight is 0.25 points. You need to click on this dash line, um, click on this alignment box to the right and make your dash two points and your gap two points and tick the dash line option there. And you can see now, here is my stitch line and I'm going to move it now to the exact right position next to the seam. If I now click to get rid of the background, you can see it's starting to look good. I'm going to group all of my lines together. So just click on layer 2 and if you press Control A, it will select all. Okay, and then right hand mouse click and click on group. So now this is one. And if I pick it up and move it, it moves as one rather than little pieces. Next, I'm going to select all and reflect one side of my corset so that it produces a, the other side. So if you just select all, then click on right hand mouse click, transform, go on to reflect. But really importantly now, click on copy. Okay, and then I can move the other half into so place. So now to draw my busk loops, I'm going to um, open up a new layer and just call it busk loops and I'm going to use my curvature pen tool. So I'll press shift, then I'll put in two points and then in the center of my line I'll just bend it into a busk-like shape. Then I'll press P to end that attachment and then I'll be able to um, just shift it into position. And then I'm going to copy paste, copy paste, copy paste. So I've got the same shaped busk all the way down. Actually made the weight of my busk a little wider. The line's a little wider, 1.25, so you can just alter that in stroke. So Control C, Control V, and I have another one, and I can use my arrow keys to easily move it into place and just keep just going. Remember to select all again, right hand mouse click and group so it's all one now piece. Follow the same steps to produce your back view, but for your eyelets, if you use this ellipse tool, okay, and press shift when you're producing one, it will make it go round and that's how you can produce your so eyelets. For drawing your eyelets, choose the ellipse tool and if I use it on its own like so, it will be an ellipse, but if I press shift, you can see it produces a perfect kind of eyelet shape and you can size it and then copy paste, copy paste as you need. Look at some tutorials on how to use the pen tool as well as the curvature tool within Adobe Help is usually best.